Welcome, everybody, to episode 31 of the ADV Podcasts. Yeah. Today, we are going to be talking about the floods in China, among other things, as usual. And we've got Three Gorges Dam. Of course. That's the key word. Yeah, the Three Gorges yeah. Dam, the floods, all that kind of thing. Um, and uh, we're very happy to be back. Last week, we were not here because we were out on a road trip filming for all our different channels. Anyway, we're going to start out with our first segment, which, of course, is What's New, where we talk about what's new in China. Game so, game. everybody, what is new in China? Um, this is pretty funny. This is going to need some background. Mm -hmm. uh, we figured because the flood garbage talk is going to be kind of sad. Yeah. And people will get probably upset and be like, holy crap, all these people might die. Before we get into that negativity, we want to show something very fun. Okay. And Jolly Old Soul, our favorite man, Mao Zedong, mm -hmm. quite possibly one of the worst pieces of shit that ever existed <laughs> in history. Of Let's not beat around the bush, yes. Yeah. Quite, not quite possibly. Yeah. Is, is responsible for more deaths than Hitler and Stalin combined. Yes. Anyway. So, great man. Still on the Chinese money. You got any Chinese money laying around? I didn't bring any with me uh, today. No worries. Sorry. Still on the money. Funny Still, quote by Mao. Yes. He said his hands will never touch money because he was a devout communist. Now mm -hmm. he's on the money. <laughs> I know. Isn't that quite funny? <laughs> Didn't used to yeah. be. Anyway, yeah. long story short, he obviously had a ton of kids, right? Yeah. Whose parents, like his, his kids turned into parents and they had kids too. Mm -hmm. And the most famous of his grandsons is called Mao Xinyu. Yeah, let's bring him up. There he is. Handsome for a man. What a handsome bloke. It's actually a very flattering picture, no joke. It's probably the best. Now, can you explain yeah. his position and how why it's so ridiculous? It's like a grand general of the PLA. And, <laughs> what is the PLA? The People's Liberation Army. Correct. Now, um, I think that this guy can be seen as a bit of a warning to what China might look like if the little emperor syndrome gets out of hand because this guy has been treated like royalty his entire life just because of his family connection to Mao Zedong. Right. The guy is one of the most ridiculous people you'll ever see because he's just been spoiled his entire life right. and treated, like I said, like royalty and pampered so much that, well, let's just just look at the guy on national TV. What does he end up doing? Let's take a close look. Mm. He's such a wonderful man, this. <laughs> he's reciting poetry right yeah. now, by the way. Yeah. Celebratory <laughs> nose pick. Now I like how they cut. You explain what yeah, they yeah, try to cut that. Yeah. Um, you can see that the cameraman very quickly noticed that this was happening. Okay, and he's this, like, it wasn't live. He's, though. he's like, oh my word! No, I think it must have been. You Otherwise, so? they would have cut it out. Yeah, of the they, they, there's yeah. no way they would have left that in. And that's why he's like, I better quickly change the camera angle, and he changed it. But he know. kept picking. Yeah, yeah. There he goes. <laughs> Anyway. Now, the, the funny thing is, is he's he's widely considered to be almost illiterate. Yeah. Yet he's a master. People have to understand, what's higher than a CCP position is a PLA general position. Yeah. They get all the money and corruption. Yeah. It's a scary position to be in. Can you imagine this man? Mm. It's kind of like a discount Kim Jong-un. Kim yeah. Jong-un's like an intellectual. In sure, comparison. sure. The thing is, he's praised because he, of his connection to Mao Zedong. Sure. And Mao Zedong was well known for... Well, except for killing so many people and, and all that, he's very well known for his calligraphy, mm -hmm. which is kind of ironic since he almost tried to erase Chinese characters from China. His, he did he did halfway. Yeah, he got he, he introduced simplified uh, Chinese, but it was actually the Soviet Union that convinced him to keep the Chinese characters because he wanted to get rid of Chinese altogether yeah. and just have the normal Roman characters, right. you know, that we use in English and so on. Anyway, the fact of the matter is he's incredibly well known for his poetry and his handwriting his calligraphy it's actually a font yeah in china and if you go to especially if you go anywhere oh, no. near his hometown and stuff you'll see all the signs use his his calligraphy mm -hmm. and stuff all right so now because this guy's related to mao zedong everybody praises his calligraphy too and here is a, a a tv show the documentary that they made about this guy's calligraphy they did a few of these yeah but and they you... actually they they did it, it was really serious they were like yeah Mao Xinyi is yeah. very famous for his calligraphy. He takes after, clearly takes after Mao Zedong, the leader of our, the founder of our country. If you yes. look at the picture, yeah, he he <laughs> is his Chinese written Chinese is worse than mine. Mine okay? too, which is and I'm bad, which is ridiculous. Okay, um, well, we actually have a picture of. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but need you doubt a tide dweller. That doesn't even make sense. No, what you know too you much. Know too much, and they signed his name. Yeah, was, yeah. The thing is, like, that's an example. And so he would, because of his his grandfather's reputation, yeah, for his calligraphy, yeah. he'd go to like schools and stuff, and they would ask for autographs and can you write like a, a bit of poetry for us? Yeah. You know, we want to see your beautiful calligraphy. Yeah. 
and the news just couldn't even hide it. They they reported that it was perfect and flawless and yeah. all this stuff. But people online were like, "What are you doing?" These I know guys the thing is that they have they have to they absolutely have to praise him. Mm. And you see, this is uh, one of the big flaws of the the Chinese communist system being shown up here. Mm. The the Communist Party is that face saving is so important that you would allow people to praise this kind of handwriting yeah. and to say that this is a great man, where right. the guy literally looks like the most spoiled disgusting man ever <laughs> yeah you know yeah. I, you should get people way. to take care of his hygiene yeah absolutely I, I honestly feel like he probably has learning disabilities so it, anyway the fact of the matter is um yeah. they speculated yeah they speculated that he was dead because he right. hadn't been in the yeah you know in the public eye for a while but guess what he just made a reappearance he wait till you see his outfit <laughs> it's it's really yeah it's one of the best things ever <laughs> <laughs> who allowed it i have that's no the thing is he's got idea. his pla honey yeah he's got all these like people bodyguards around him. yeah and that's what freeze it there oh, oh yeah man. sorry I'll, I'll, I'll take it back and that's what he chose to wear yeah it literally looks like his ass cheeks are on the front of his body <laughs> yeah i mean look i don't like to make fun no. of people's appearance but in this case i do i just this think guy so... looks ridiculous <laughs> Okay, that's he a looks, cartoon. He looks like a little boy, you know, like like a very <laughs> young little, little boy. Little Fauntleroy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He has a uh, little cane. Yeah. Anyway, um, obviously he needs that to walk. He's not in great sure, shape. Sure. No, I'm not. I don't want to make fun of people with disabilities. Yeah. But actually, because I actually yeah. think he probably does have a learning disability. Uh, absolutely. But the fact that he's put on a pedestal and give, that's the scary thing. The reason I'm mm-hmm. laughing about it, he's mm-hmm. given one of the highest positions in China. Yeah. You know, that's absolutely. terrifying. I know it is ter- terrible. Using a VPN has become a staple part of our job and life in general. Not only does using a VPN hide your identity and protect your data online, it means that no one else can snoop in on what you're doing and all of your credit card information and all that good stuff is safe and encrypted. There's another good feature of a VPN and that's region locking. You can get past region locks, which means that in some countries, certain videos or streaming services or content is just not available. So you can use a VPN to trick your internet into thinking you're in a different country and you'll have access to that information, whether it be on Netflix or YouTube or any other streaming service. So it's super convenient. Take control of your internet experience today with NordVPN, our VPN of choice. This is your last chance to get 70% off of a three-year plan plus one additional month for free when you go to nordvpn.com slash advpodcasts or use the code advpodcasts. This special offer makes your subscription just $3.49 per month. That's nordvpn.com slash advpodcasts. Get the deal before it's too late. Now, um, before we move on to our main segment today, um, I would like to point out that the the background behind us, um, this particular one was shot in Shanghai uh, less than a week ago. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's very current. Meters by we. And the reason why I want to show that to everybody is to show you how normal and calm everything appears to be to the the, the average person who lives in the larger first tier cities. Sure. Because I remember in in Shenzhen. When I was living in Shenzhen, the power didn't go out once mm. in 14 and a half years, not once. Mm-hmm. But I found out why. It's because other outlying cities like Dongguan and so on, their power plants would send the power to Shenzhen as a priority. So if there was a problem, OK, and let's just say the power was going to go out in Shenzhen, they would shut down the power grid for Dongguan and send that power down well, to Shenzhen. Why didn't you ask me? How many yeah. times the power yeah, in, Hui, in Huizhou, right? About 10 times a year. About 10 times a year, yeah. So what I'm saying is the big, bright cities of China take massive priority. Mm. And as a result of that, the people living in the big, bright cities, are Shenzhen, Shanghai, Guangzhou, you know, Beijing, those kind of places, they would really think that there's absolutely nothing wrong with the world because... Right. The whole focus of the government is to make sure that those cities, no matter what happens, Correct. will run. Okay, right. And that if there's a natural disaster or anything like that, it will not affect those cities, at least as far as they can control it. Correct. Okay, And so that's why when people live in these larger cities, they, they get an idea that China's all... 100% hunky-dory and totally okay. Well, because most foreigners, honestly, most foreigners don't leave those cities. No. San Li Tun, Beijing, yeah. uh, Coco Park area of, yeah. of Shenzhen. They don't get to see the rest of the country a lot of them. Nan, Nanjing Lu, like Nanjing behind Lu, us, with yeah. that, that horrible strobe effect on the lights. Yeah. Um, 
that, yeah, in Shanghai. They don't leave these areas because it's, it's well, frankly, it's, it's very alarming. uncomfortable. It's alarming. Yeah. It's, <laughs> if you leave. It's first to third world. I do have a lot of respect for the, uh, the foreigners who do go and live in the smaller towns. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like they get a, a more well-rounded picture of China. Because, yeah, because you still have rich people yeah, there, too. Yeah, you do. Right? But but not only that, the people that do live in the rural towns, they still go to the biggest yeah, cities. that's true. And they still travel through them. So they get to see the best of China and the worst of China. Mm-hmm. And then they can kind of figure out what it's really like in right. between. But the people who live in the uh, sort of Nanshan districts of Shenzhen or, in the, you know, any of these, suddenly twin, like you say, they don't really see it because no. everything looks great. And there's a very big reason why I'm saying this is because the people living in Shenzhen, uh, Shenzhen Shanghai, Beijing, Guangzhou, etc., Qingdao, they are not seeing the effects of the floods. Correct. Because the floods are happening inland and far away from these big cities. Number two, it's not being reported. Yeah. And the few times that I've seen coverage come out of China in English and in Chinese, it's posed and it's shot sli- very slickly. Yeah. But it's posed as a global warming cause. Yeah. Or a global warming symptom, right? So it has nothing to do with China. And they actually go so far yeah. as to say countries like India and other manufacturing countries like Vietnam are making global warming worse. <laughs> yeah. But China's a leader in green mm-hmm. technology. Yeah. So the floods are not our fault. Yeah, totally. Anyway, so this is Soft Power Hour that we started already, which of course is our segment where we talk about how the lovely Chinese government is using its ways to change your mind, usually through some kind of propaganda or advertising or, you know, sort of, I don't know, cooking the books as far as the facts are concerned. So let's get on to this lovely little um, thing in the background here, floods. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about the floods. First of all, floods are s- scary, okay? They're probably one of the most scary things that you can ever experience. I've been in a situation before where it's flooded. In fact, remember that time we went to Zhenyuan? It was Dude. in Zhenyuan. We were in Zhenyuan, which is in one Guizhou. of these, yeah, one of these... um. Tourist towns. Tourist towns. They've got all the pagodas. They've got the fake bricks. You know, they've got that whole thing yep. going on. We were sitting on the river having a beer. We probably have footage. We should have dug it up. Yeah. And there do. was a massive downpour, and all of a sudden, the, the water rose and broke the banks of the river, destroyed. Like immediately. Yeah. Just started to destroy all the touristy things. They had tourist barges and stuff. Wiped out half the town while we were there. And we just kind of took our beers and went up, kept going further and the further. Stairs, yeah. Up, <laughs> yeah, and up yeah. and up to get away as it rose and rose and rose. And it was serious how quickly it happened and how yeah. serious these things can be. Anyway. Uh, the scary thing was the towns around it yeah. were just swallowed. Yeah. These are, um, by the way, these are fairly recent uh, Yeah, from the current floods. That are so this is right affecting now. central China, around yeah. Wuhan, actually, where the pandemic broke out. Yeah. Up. I mean, talk about bad luck for the people of Wuhan. It's terrible for them. Yeah. Um, but like, like we said, it's not being reported widely in the news. And when it is reported... By the way, uh, what you saw there, let's go back a little bit, are the people standing in line with buckets to get fresh water because, of course, the floods, they knock out your infrastructure and you can't, you know, turn on the the tap to get water to boil and stuff like that. Yeah, a lot of food is going to waste as well. Yeah, absolutely. So these floods are a a real major concern and Mm -hmm. they're continually happening. It has the rains aren't really stopping, you know, get a little respite here and there. But like I say, what you do hear in the news and what you do see in the news in China right now when it's concerning the floods is they will show footage of mm-hmm. flooded streets mm-hmm. because you cannot escape no. this. I mean, everyone's got WeChat. Yeah, everyone's phone. sharing it on WeChat. That's where all these, these videos right. that we're showing you come from are people, you know, who are just like, oh, look at my street. Right. It's completely done. So what they do is they will post in the news. Oh, look at the valiant efforts of the PLA going to make sure everybody mm-hmm. has fresh water, make sure that everyone's uh, being saved. Which North is, Korea style. Yeah, I mean, it's nice and all, and they are putting in an effort. And you, you got to understand, they are they are actually putting in an effort. But what they're doing as well is putting in more effort into making sure that people don't see how it is, bad it is. It is now a crime to share, spread rumors about the flood. It's just like what happened. Mm. The thing is, you think, you can pause it for a second. You can, yeah. you can make a comparison here to, to the whistleblower, Li Wenliang, when, mm-hmm. when coronavirus came out, right? Yeah. What they did was effectively cause the entire spread because they ignored him and shut him up. Actually made it illegal to even talk about it, right? Sure. China got so much criticism for that, the Mm -hmm. way they dealt with that, yet they're doing it again with the flooding situation. Yeah, I mean, the floods are a little different, though. You know, in this, there's nothing you can really do other than just try and fix it afterwards, you know? Yeah, but they're prosecuting people that are talking about it. I know, it's terrible. It's terrible. Look, we all know that China's actually very bad when it comes to drainage. Yes. um, Every city floods. Having lived in Shenzhen... uh, where you have these massive, massive torrential downpours mm-hmm. every year during summer. Quite a few times I've been caught in these situations too, where 
cars are covered over yeah. buses get completely flooded. we'd have to communicate yeah. sometimes because i lived about an hour and a half away from you yeah, yeah whether one of us would go to the each other's office because yeah. it'd be flooded in one of the cities yeah they couldn't even drive on the highway it's like literally yeah because there would be parts of the highway which were covered it does happen you know the drainage is an issue so it just exacerbates this problem because the banks of the rivers are bursting you've got all this uh, this water coming through um anyway let's talk about what's going on uh you see in the background the left hand clip not the right hand clip sure so the left the right hand clip is just a normal city street here well i put these together for a reason okay because you see these cars being waterlogged now yeah. what you're seeing in the left is a car dealership yeah and what they're doing is getting rid of all the parts that were waterlogged and stripping them and yeah. then putting new parts in and then selling them at the same dealership as, as brand new, new cars yeah yeah i know it's uh, it's what happens it's a very chabdoa china situation Did you see he had a he had a, a, a honda a, a honda the guangzhou honda yeah yeah jersey on exactly so they're working this is honda yeah We're these are these are brand new cars yeah. yeah you can see obviously the uh, underground parking gets destroyed you know a friend of mine actually um he was very lucky and this was and this is not even i mean this is china related a friend of mine who was keeping a car in in macau mm -hmm. in one of these underground things he borrowed it or lent it to he lent it to me for like oh, yeah, a, a couple months yeah. and while i was looking after it for him because he he wanted me to just keep it going because you know it was just sitting there one of these massive like downpours happened and the parking garage that he usually kept it in got completely flooded so mm -hmm. he really missed he just missed it by a hair it was like a week or something Do you remember my parking garage yeah it was it was a, a pool yeah was, we everyone had to move out yeah and a couple of people left their bicycles and stuff in there and they just like yeah. froze the tail like, pulled it out <laughs> i know it's ridiculous it was terrible anyway no i have a quick thing yeah when my parents visited they've, they've only been to china once but mm -hmm. when they visited a massive flood happened in huizhou right and my mom had never seen anything like it obviously right because yeah. there's infrastructure it's in like US. biblical proportions you know so yeah she goes down yeah. and she says that her, her most poignant memory of coming to china mm -hmm. was obviously all the cool people she met and had fun she had but was a rat shivering on a bicycle seat that was almost fully submerged as like right. a, a river went down my road. You right, know, it's just right, right. A shivering, shivering rat. <laughs> I know, right? It's ridiculous. Yeah, but, but yeah. look, there's there's a lot of damage, obviously. Um, Billions. Yeah. yeah, to to people that live in in these areas that have been hit. Yeah. But we have to talk about the elephant in the room here, and that is, of course, the the Three Gorges Dam. Sure. Okay. Now. Can you explain to everybody what the Three Gorges Dam is? It's the biggest hydroelectricity plant in the world. And it dams up a huge part of the Yangtze River. Yeah. And it's responsible for like 3% of the water slash uh, electricity in China. Yeah. But the problem is, is although it does provide a lot of services for things, mm -hmm. when they built it, when they took on this massive project, it wasn't anything new to China. Dams have always been a part of Chinese history. In fact, that's how China started. Yes. Was dams. Yeah, a guy made a dam, and right. he became the emperor because right. he he learned how to harness. dam. Yeah, harness the power of nature, so they didn't have to rely on the seasons for their rainfall. That's you know? the issue, though, is that China's mm. always been a very autocratic, top-heavy governmental system. Yeah, and it's always been in their prerogative to harness nature. And the problem is, in the twenty-first and twenty and twentieth twenty-first century. They didn't learn because they still had the communist government, which is top heavy. Yeah. So they didn't understand environmental issues. So they already had dam failures in the 70s right. where hundreds of thousands of people died. Yeah. yeah. Bridges fall down all the time. It's mm -hmm. really dangerous. And the building materials exacerbate the problem. Right. So you have the world's biggest dam, biggest yeah. hydro plant, mm -hmm. and underneath it, below mm -hmm. it, the affected areas, are home to 400 million people. I know. That's so the worst part. the population part. of America. Yeah, right. it's the worst part is that the amount of people that would be affected if this dam collapsed. Now, even China's own dam experts have admitted that the the dam is deformed. Right. Okay, so it's not. It's you not you like heard it's, that little thing they said. Yeah. Three Gorges Dam will last for ten thousand years, and then yeah. they dropped it to a thousand years, and they dropped it to a hundred years. Yeah, I know. So now it's a hundred years. These floods are no joke, like I keep saying. Mm -hmm. But you can just see from the footage behind us, which is all recent footage, that mm -hmm. this this is something that's not to Look be taken that. lightly. It's a <laughs> okay. road. And the reason why you're also seeing so much flooding, even though the dams are there, is because they've had to be, uh, they've had to basically open the sluice gates of yeah. the Three Gorges Dam, and it's been pumping out water nonstop, 24 hours a day, to relieve pressure. Because look, they are doing everything that they can to prevent this. I'm I'm not trying to call them out and say hey you know this Try you, you suck you know whatever it's like this is a big potential catastrophe that could really affect china in a, in a monumental way 
if that dam were to collapse, like you said, over 400 million people might die or at least be terribly or affected. Famine. Yeah, yeah, of course. Millions you, of acres. You would have uh, just whole towns wiped out, cities wiped out. The Red out. Bull of China is there, dude. Yeah. It's where all the food is grown. Absolutely. And China already has to import a lot of food and now it's under sanctions. Yeah, exactly. So it's not a good thing. So they're doing everything that they possibly can in order to prevent the collapse of the dam. And that includes allowing far too much water through the sluice gates. And that's why you're having so much flooding is because sure. this is already too much for the, the rivers to handle right. and for you know the local infrastructures to handle. They you obviously don't I mean? have flex tape. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> this sucks though. Me and Winston would see just collapses of buildings and bridges and things, especially in the more rural areas. And the, the hardest hit stuff is in are in these rural areas. Uh, yeah. Where keep in mind, the downtown Shanghai is not the majority of the population of China. They still live in the rural areas. Yeah. And they're just getting massacred and they're not even allowed to talk about it. Yeah, exactly. You know, so some, it's terrifying. Twin in Beijing's not seeing this. My issue is that the Three Gorges Dam, mm. everyone keeps thinking, oh, China's massive infrastructure projects, and then a train derails. Yeah. China's massive b a building projects, they watch a building fall down. Yeah. Your isolated incidents that you could get to see out of China are very limited based mm. on censorship, right? Yeah. So what we're seeing right now is a, a tiny minute little bit of information yeah. coming out of these flooded areas. And yeah. if I know anything, the building materials used for the Three Gorges Dam, there's there's probably a lot of corruption involved with that too. Yeah, I don't know. Something on that scale, maybe not. Dude, I don't even know. Because like, remember that bridge in uh, Harbin? Yeah. Come on. Yeah, it was massive. True. So you yeah. never know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's 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 true. We, we can speculate all we want. Our, but... our job today, I want to yeah. point out, is mm -hmm. not to speculate if it's going to collapse or not. Yeah. Personally, I'm not a scientist. I don't know. Right? <laughs> We can only hope for the best for the people affected because I'm worried that the cover-up will cause more suffering. Yeah. Well, what we can see on the right is what what you were talking about is that the building materials that are used are not usually of the best quality. Right. A lot of shortcuts are taken. Mm -hmm. I find that in China, lots of shortcuts are taken when there aren't watchful eyes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if somebody gets to build a, a bridge in a rural area or something and you don't have lo like Beijing government officials coming to check up on it regularly, they'll just do whatever they want. And they'll find somebody who can supply them with cheaper cement or concrete or whatever that's substandard, etc. And you can see the effects of this quite often, like this bridge that we see, um, you know, up here kind of just doing the domino effect and collapse. Oftentimes they'll just paint uh, paper mache basically with concrete. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, you've got to love what's going on here. These guys standing... <laughs> on this uh, roof and knocking. Why would you do that, by the way? I actually have no idea. You know those, I was hoping you'd explain. You, you know that. those cartoons where there's someone sitting on a tree branch, like sawing the tree branch yeah. off? Yeah. It kind of looks like what they're doing. They're smashing the floor that they're standing on. Sure. Whew. This is yeah. the uh, the mm -hmm. dam that they, they broke on purpose. Yeah. Right. Just to relieve pressure. Yeah. And that's already affected. It's already contributed to massive amounts of flooding. Yeah, but that that action saved like 8 million people. It did. So they, was, like, they are trying to That's the problem, best. though, is that pause it for a second yeah. this is the issue is that using like communist party of china logic yeah they do these massive mega projects mm. okay let's say get the, they get the best engineers and scientists they want yeah you can't mess with mother nature because yeah. at the end of the day she she always wins yeah and when you have environmental groups and like actual uh due process in different yeah. countries when they try to build something massive mm -hmm. it's not about get it done get it done get it done because yeah. in china you get something like Mao Xinyi, some yeah. fat dude that gives yeah. an order that affects a lot of people, mm -hmm. but he's not all there, right? Sure. He's just super powerful, and no one below him can say anything. No. And I'm worried about the response to this dam failure and the flooding could be one of those situations where somebody at the top doesn't want to lose face. Yeah. They give some orders, and they might not be the correct ones. And yeah. No one can do a damn thing. I want to show you something about, like, you want to talk about, like, bad quality sure. building quality i want to show you a little clip here is it worse than like the paper mache building that we went through it's pretty bad i'm just gonna have to wait for it to pop up guys it takes some time with our setup here um there it is let me make it a little bigger so that everybody can actually see it okay all right i think everybody can see that right probably yeah, thereabouts okay let's just play this clip no audio right? yeah i'm making sure there's no audio okay let's play this clip here okay i'd like you to see this is um you know, this is a bridge, and this is a, a decorative, whatever you call that thing. Pole. Pommel, turret, sure. parapet, something, uh, something like whatever. Just Somebody will correct us. Um, and take a look at the, the quality of this. Yeah. I mean. And we've seen this in real life. Yeah. 
Yeah, if you, you watch, you watch our, our video about our Chinese buildings falling down or yeah, whatever. We visited change, a yeah. ghost town that was made yeah. of this. Yeah, exactly. So what you saw there was, um, you know, pretty much... That's a bridge, a load-bearing bridge. Well, I mean, obviously that's not the load-bearing part. Of course. But what that is, is it's they will use some very inferior material to stuff it, and then they will basically put a little bit of uh, cement on the outside sure. or some kind of coating on the outside. So, But explain it, all the bridge failures then. Yeah, no, there are lots of bridge failures, but... What you'll find is, that I've seen it with my own eyes where they use styrofoam, yep. like in that video of ours. We saw it, okay, wood, wood. Um, bamboo instead mm. of rebar, corn. Corn? You know? We should have put that in yeah. there. Ramen noodles. Ramen noodles. Like, there's, like no joke. Any kind of, kind of hard material they can put in and then put a, a facade over it or a coating. Mm. And they're like, done. And then they meet their deadline or whatever. It's, it's dangerous because of the level of corruption. This can actually affect people's lives. And this is what we're concerned about when it comes to all this flooding. Damn, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, so what else can we say about it? Well, best of luck to everyone out there. And I hope everyone's just like has an evacuation plan in case things go wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because it would be a disaster. And, the, you know, people kept saying coronavirus is going to be China's Chernobyl. Yeah. No, if anything, it just it strengthened the Communist Party of China. However, something of this biblical proportion... Uh, three, the Three Gorges Dam, like breaking and 400 million people being affected and like far, all the farmland gone, that would be China's Chernobyl. You also do notice that there's a plant. huge locust plague, which is what's going on yeah, yeah. over there happening at the same time. It's it's almost like you're reading the <laughs> yeah, Bible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it Floods, sucks. you know, famine, from well, locusts, plagues. It's, it's, it's pretty Trade bad. Trade war. Yeah. So war fits in there too. Yeah. We're not. We're no, we're not. We're not into like all of that kind of stuff. But it's just, it is kind of crazy how much is going wrong all at the same time. It is, you know. And it's it's a very small percentage of what we're seeing. Yeah, that's the problem. Correct. So, so. that's the situation right now. Uh, you can actually keep an eye on the Three Gorges Dam. Um, well, sort of, by looking at Google Maps and the satellite imagery. Mm -hmm. Bear in mind that when you do look at it, there's an offset of a couple of hundred meters, so it looks weird. You China have to does like, that on purpose. Well, yeah, it's something to do with the differences in the um, the standards for GPS mm -hmm. mapping and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, you've got to deal with that, but uh, you can actually go and take a look. So that's, There's also a live stream. There, there is a live stream uh, which shows, and if you, you can go watch it, and it's actually showing all the water coming out. So you can keep an eye on the Three Gorges Dam. And like I've said before in a previous podcast, Unlike many other things that China can cover up in the news, this will not be possible because satellite imagery would show you if the dam had collapsed. Right. Um, by the way, before we move on to our next segment, I wanted to just give a shout out to this, this guy over here, Harry Chen, somebody we actually know mm -hmm. uh, from China and uh, who we have on our WeChat and so on. He is the source for the majority of the flood stuff that we got here mm -hmm. because he is actually going out there on Twitter and he is posting all of these clips. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you it's are... A huge risk. Yeah, if you are somebody on Twitter, I would really highly suggest you go and follow the guy Yeah, um, and maybe leave him a comment to say, you know, the ADV podcast sent mm -hmm. you or whatever, Serpent today or Law 86 sent you, whatever you want to do. But, um, you know, it's good to see that this guy's getting the news out there. Yeah. Um, and there's yeah. more Chinese people that really want the truth than you think. Trust yeah. me. Yeah. No, absolutely. But they put themselves at a huge risk. Huge risk. Uh, yeah, yeah. My, my video tomorrow will talk about that. But sure. uh, let's let's continue on to our next subject, shall we? Are we not going to do Super Chats? Oh, yeah. I always do that. Sorry. Super Chat <laughs> we did, time. We missed two Super Chat slots now. Oh, we did. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's uh, pop out down here. Sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. um, Edgar, the animal. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Lucifer. You know the deal, mates. Get some drinks and watch the world unfold. With the U.S. and other countries now officially reporting UFOs and other tech recoveries, would you be surprised if China was up to some nef nefarious meddling? I would not. No, no, not at all. I don't think anyone would be. Yeah. Thank you. Ultima Mike, uh, MLC, what is the real unemployment rate in China? Now, here's a, there's a little a little yeah. deal for you right over here. Yeah, yeah. You writing some stuff, stuff down? Yeah, I just remembered messages. something. Okay. You know how I like to write on my hand, which I never do. Actually, that's me. Yeah. That's, right. Anyway. Anyways. Um, so China likes to keep their unemployment rate down artificially. What they do is find any uh, either government position or a shop or anything and just chuck tons and tons of employees in there and pay the minimum wage. So you can go to like, I remember there's a, a supermarket across the street from my house called Wanjia. Yeah. Then there was one called uh, Renren Le down the road mm. and no one went to that one, right? <laughs> 
But when you go in there, you get inundated by like shop employees. Yeah, there's, there's like of 50 women there just yeah. waiting. You're like, do you, what do you need this? You want a yeah. bottle of wine? You want yeah, this? Yeah. That's how yeah. they artificially do it. So they'll, the minimum wage is so low, it's mm. not much money out of their pocket. Sure. But they're not real positions and it's not real work. Right, right, right. You know. Yeah, of course. It's really hard to tell because with most official numbers coming out of China, it is what they want you to see. Yes. It's that simple. Right. right. I'll do one Thanks. more. one, yeah. Jan Fausta, Fausta uh, hi guys, Wednesday, keep up the amazing work. Uh, false safety video made me think a lot about my time living in China. Any updates on the floods in Nanjing? Any mm -hmm. friends of yours live there? Stay awesome. Uh, yeah. I had two friends in Nanjing, but they left last year, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, we, we, we don't know. Right now, the, the person I know that was living in Nanjing actually moved to a different city, yeah. so yeah, it's kind of tough. Moved I'll do, to Qingdao. I'll mm -hmm. do a couple more. Right. H, uh, mm -hmm. Preciado, uh, your channel is the best response to what China is about. Informed, open, and funny. Keep up the great work. Drink me better Mexican beer. Corona sucks. I agree. Yeah, Dos Equis is what I like. Yeah, I like... And Tecate. Uh, Tecate is okay. Dos mm -hmm. Equis is good. What about a special? I like uh, Modelo. Negro Modelo. Yeah, Modelo. Yeah. Uh, and Tung Fam, beer money. Thank you. That's very generous. Absolutely. That's a lot of beer. Mm -hmm. uh, First Utopia, keep up the great work, guys. Love the show. I bought myself your Lao t shirt tonight. Thank you. Nice. Appreciate nice. it. Uh, Bengal Tiger in New York City, love the Sands shirt. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, let's move on. So, what I wrote on my hand, which you probably can't see, is Chengdu Consulate. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because we forgot to talk about that. Sure. Um, well, that's we can put that in Worldview. I suppose we could. So should we move on yeah, to let's Worldview? Move on. Okay, we're going to move on to Worldview, where we talk about everything in the world, specifically regarding China. Okay. <laughs> now, <laughs> guys, I think everybody knows by now this tit for tat nonsense that's going on with the consulates. Basically, I'll give you a very, very brief idea of what happened. The Houston consulate was shut down. The Chinese Houston consulate because they linked it to espionage, IP theft, things like that. Okay, I think we all know that China is guilty of stealing intellectual property. That, and then they fact, burned all the documents. No secret. They cannot deny it. Every no. single Chinese company that produces any kind of product is a direct copy or a derivative of something that a Western company has made. In modern times, obviously, ancient China is a different story. They invented the compass and the printing press. and, and That's you know, not relevant. All that kind of stuff. But that's not what we're talking about. Okay. Um, we're talking about modern day. Okay, so the, the Houston consulate was shut down and obviously there's a reason for that. And uh, I can give you a couple of um, educated guesses and that's because of all the high tech companies and so on that happen that are in Houston and all the, the pharmaceutical and medical stuff that goes on there. And that is where China would want people to go and steal information and bring it to the consulate. So they probably figured it out, you know, they've got all sorts of crap. So anyway, we won't get into that. But when they were ordered to shut down, um, the the staff were caught burning documents and various things in the courtyard. The fire they had seventy two hours. That's yeah, right. the fire trucks arrived. They were denied entry. They weren't allowed to help. Um, and then it's a huge diplomatic thing, dude. Like it's yeah. a pretty big deal. Anyway, and as usual, China tit for tat said, "Oh yeah, you want to close one of our consulates? We're going to close one of your consulates." And then they said, oh, we're just going to close the Chengdu one. Because I guess they had looked through their list of consulates and like, <laughs> eh, which one would like be the least like right. worrisome if we right. close? Chengdu is not that important. We'll just shut it down. Right. We'll be like, yeah, we've got a bunch of foreigners chilling out here anyway at the moment. So it's OK. We can balance it out. So I think that's what they did was they closed it down because it was the easiest one to close down with the least amount of repercussions. Anyway. I just want to talk about the difference in the reaction from mm. both countries. When the Houston one was shut down here, what happened? It was met with Chinese protesters that were like, you can't do this. This is our China. Mm. Wham, wham, wham. But they're just nationalists and probably shills for the CCP. Right. No one else cared. No. That barely made news. Yeah. I mean, obviously it did make the news. Yeah. I'm talking about it's not a, it wasn't like a week long thing. Like Updates here. Wow. Look at this. It was a quick story. Yeah. Um, I didn't see... Any representatives of your government, the no. American government going online and saying to everybody, we should all go down to the, the consulate no. there and protest against China and make no. a big hoo-ha. No. Or like, we should hate China or look how bad China is. I didn't see that. No. But guess what happened in China when the Chengdu consulate closed? woo -wee! There were celebrations. They were letting off fireworks. They were cheering. Crowds came down there. For no there reason. They did, like, the people there protest. barely even knew yeah. what the hell they were doing. It's just ridiculous. It was like a huge thing. And it kind of... Um, it gives you an idea into the mindset of how important um, the U.S. is to China, mm -hmm. but how unimportant China is to the average person in the U.S. Sure. Because the narrative in the news in China is constantly trying to 
focus on America and how bad it is, et cetera, et cetera, mm. right? So people start to believe it and they really, it's in their system. But the average Joe over here doesn't pay that much attention no. to China. No. You know, obviously people know about it, the trade war, especially with the pandemic, they're mm. starting to be turned onto it. But it's not so much that you have massive crowds that decide they're going to go celebrate and let off fireworks and no. stuff out because no, of the closing no of the consulate. To. Yeah. I also do want to talk a little bit about the tit for tat thing, mm -hmm. okay? And how ridiculous it is. Every single time, it's not even America, any country does something which China doesn't like, they will do exactly the same back. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened with the Huawei CFO. Mm -hmm. She was detained. And arrested for you know to go on trial so what do they do they go and arrest a bunch of canadians well let's look at the two examples though yeah the two canadians are innocent yeah princess Meng was guilty and obviously arrested for a reason yeah she or broke the law. at least she's innocent till proven guilty but there's evidence enough that they have to arrest her and put her on trial my, my point is that yeah. tip for tat thing when they arrested the two michaels two yeah. innocent people there was no trial yeah they're their hearing was yes they're espionage they're spies there's no evidence we're not going to say anything <laughs> same with the houston consulate yeah. Oh, we closed the Houston consulate because they're spying and there's all kinds of national security risks. So we're going to do this, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're going to close down the American embassy in Chengdu for absolutely no reason. Yeah. Because oh. I'm a spoiled little brat. Yeah. Oh, we're going to close it down because reasons. Because reasons. Deal with it. That's, you know? And that's always how it is. And then they will, in their um, international spokesperson, spokespeople will go out there and say, America should stick to the rule of law. Right. Meanwhile, right. in China, they don't have a rule of law. They right. have a, an idea of what they want to do, and they just do it. So it's quite ridiculous how every time the, the Hmong princess trials come up, they keep going on about how like unconstitutional it is, and you're stepping on her rights, and you should follow the rule of law. What about the guys that you arrested without charging and just kept them in jail for God knows how long without even telling people what they're charged with, then making up some crap? Anyway, which we know is completely false. Th this tit for tat thing, I saw so much when I was in China, sure. especially visa rules and stuff. Mm -hmm. So this country says, oh, Chinese can't do this. And then, then China says, oh, well, then people from that country oh, yeah. can't do that. How dare you say we have human rights issues? No, they're, they're what are they, um, putting oh. sanctions against um, the So there's a, there's a law that, yeah. that might pass, I'm not sure. Uh, but anybody that is in the Communist Party of China won't be able to come to the U.S. Mm. Or at least get residency. I can't remember yeah. the law. But anyway... That is because there are so many Communist Party officials in in the country that we live in right now. Yeah. That uh, even some of the uh, the crazy ones, like the spokesperson spokeswoman mm -hmm. for China. Yeah. That's always saying that really mouthy stuff on Twitter. Yeah. Hua Chunyin. Yeah, that one. Um, I can't tweet. I believe she has a mansion in the Bay Area. <laughs> yeah. And totally. her kid goes to school here. Yeah. Yet she is the one that is very voraciously anti-Western, anti-democracy, anti-freedom, yeah. pro-genocide, yeah. pro-human rights abuses, pro-CCP, pro-communism. Sure. Sure. She, of all people, is invested here in the U.S. And why do you think that is? It's because they know that if shit hits the fan, they have a place that they can go. Yeah. Because you can be disposed of in China in the Communist Party of China system. There are so many Communist Party officials here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. that are invested that... To tell them that they can't come anymore is a huge blow. So what do they do? Communist Party of China goes, well, we're talking about not letting any U.S. officials come and live and invest here. Who the hell wants to do that? Yeah, how many of them want to do that? Who goes, you know, I have this. I have four kids here. You know, I've been working for the U.S. government for a while. I think we should just pack up and move to Sichuan because I heard the schools are great. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't work that way. And the fact of the matter is the majority of the uh, Communist Party members that end up coming to China anyway, the, the ones that were in the government, mm. you know, they, they, I mean, come to America, is they, they want to do it because they can get their money out of China. Yeah. Their, their assets can be seized in a second by the Communist Party. Right. But over here, they can buy real estate, they can invest in all these things that they can't do in China, you know, without a huge risk. Right. And it's relatively safe for them to get their money out and, of course, to have their family here sure. and, and to do all these things. So, yeah, they, they take advantage of it. And so there's a lot of incentive for these people to come here. But recently, the that woman who was caught and she was, you know, a, an acting, she was caught for visa fraud because she said that she wasn't a part of the PLA, mm -hmm. but she was. Oh, yeah, one, yeah. And they showed photos of her in, her in her uniform with the insignia and said, but what's and this? She's like, I don't even recognize yeah. this uniform. Yeah, it's like, I don't even know what that insignia means. It, uh, it's a joke. That, it's like yeah. just, just cosplaying or whatever. The one that hid in the consulate. Yeah. Right. But this, she got arrested. I mean, I spoke to some of my Chinese friends and they were laughing at this thing about America's going to stop the P. That know, was, the, the that CCP was what I, I was so ha happy yeah. when I was reading yeah. Weibo. They're like, you know, they were laughing, and the reason they were laugh laughing is they were like, 
how the hell is America ever going to prove that someone was in the PLA? They don't know. Mm. Like anyone can just say, no, I was never in the PLA, yeah. even if they're a general or right. like the, the head of the PLA. Right. And they could come here and like, oh, no, I never did it. And mm. there is no way to prove it. What are you going to do? Ask China to release the records of who's in the PLA? <laughs> hey, who's, who's spying for you guys? That's the thing is they don't know. And another thing people don't realize is that a huge amount of people in China are part of the PLA, at least party members of the CCP mm -hmm. and somehow involved. If you are any kind of government job, you are like registered as a, as a party member. You know, mm. you have to be. You have to. This, it's ridiculous. So, I mean... I know lots of people who are in the, the Communist Party, hmm. you know, because they either signed up for it or because they work, they had to. Or so, yeah, some people had no choice. Yeah, exactly. Um, so this this idea that they might be banning these, uh, you know, people in the Communist Party, you get, number one, the outraged older people who are like, how dare they? How dare they try to block our Chinese from coming to America? The second group are the, the ones like, Psh, America's too dumb. They'll never know. And you know what? I agree with the second group because America is too dumb. They will never know. They let too many of uh, these like corrupt officials and stuff just slip under the radar. Because, well, I think that it's going to be more proactive yeah, now. Yeah, hopefully. But it's true, though. How do you prove it? Mm. You can't. There's a third set of people, though, that you failed to mention. Okay, which are? That I, uh, they're my favorite people. If you read on Weibo, if you read yeah. Chinese, yeah. Uh, a lot of people are younger people are saying this is the first thing that both China and America can finally get along on because they hate the corrupt they do, officials. They do. They take squander all the money and they take it out of China. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, these people will never have a chance to leave, yeah. and it affects their life there. There's a huge brain drain. There's a huge money drain. Yeah. So they make China a worse place. These officials. So these people hate these officials, dude. I, yeah, you're absolutely right, and it is unfair because the the average middle class person in China is really struggling. Of course, the yeah. lower class and poor people are really, really yeah. struggling. But the middle class people struggle really hard mm -hmm. just to get their kids into a decent school and stuff. Meanwhile, the, the officials are sending their children to Cambridge and Harvard. Oh, a huge chunk of them. You know, I mean, Mao Zedong, I mean, not Mao Zedong. She, she she's just daughter's She's, she's daughter here. was in Harvard. Yeah. You know, still is here again. Yeah. It's ridiculous. You know, it's kind of, it's infuriating for the average Chinese person who sure. are the people that we care about. I do, I do think, though, like not my, my personal opinion is that the American intelligence is much better than you may be letting on. Yeah. And there was not an incentive to stop that kind of stuff because the floodgates were open. Everyone would allow China to become like this. Yeah. That's why we're in this position now. Yeah. So intelligence will actually step up and do something about it. Before, there was no incentive. Oh, a Communist Party official wants to come over here and move money over here? Fine. Go yeah. buy a house. Nowadays, it's an actual security threat in people's yeah. minds. Yeah, I know. It's also a big difference between a high trust society yeah, true. and a low trust true. society like China. So you you don't expect somebody if you put if you put your yeah you got an apple tree growing in your front yard, right? Mm. You would not expect the average person to just come up and take the, all the apples no. off the tree. No. Or if you put out a sign on your street that said, "Please come help yourself to an apple," mm -hmm. but then one person comes and takes them all. Mm -hmm. You, you wouldn't expect that. No. You wouldn't, wouldn't expect no. that. And that's the people problem. People would be like, oh, I'll take one. Yeah, exactly. That's the problem is people and governments around the world, world were not prepared for the kind of attitude um, that the Chinese society has bred into a lot of people. Sure. So, you know, you have to understand that. Anyway, I guess uh, that was that. Yeah. So should we do, well, should we just move on to our Q&A section? Uh, we have a couple more pieces oh, of we material. Oh, I'm sorry. World Again, video. I keep uh, jumping ahead. Give us a second then. Here we are. Um, uh, just, I wanted to use today's worldview, mm -hmm. the end of the worldview, to refute some funny things, some funny okay. claims from either subscribers or Wu Mao themselves. All right. Um, the first piece of media that we have coming up here after this little black break. There we go. Yeah. Uh, Winston and I both kind of collabed with an idea last week uh, mm -hmm. with our videos talking about the safety of China. Yeah. I'm pause it right there. Um, and how. When we were there, it was very apparent that China was not the numbers that they report in terms right. of theft, crime, human trafficking, all this right. horrible stuff, road fatalities, all yeah. this kind of stuff. And I got a lot of Wu Mao activity saying, like, what the hell are you talking about? I've never been to America, but I know it's really dangerous. Mm -hmm. China's so, so safe. You can you can walk around here whenever you want, yeah, blah, blah. Walk around at night. This is what the majority of buildings look like in China. Yeah. Um, some a little different, but there are bars over the windows. And why I, do you think I got to say this one is a bit extreme. It is. It okay. Is, but it's not that bad normally. But at least the first, at, at least the first six stories sure. of most 
apart in fact all apartment mm-hmm. buildings in China have heavy burglar bars on them. Yeah. Okay. Theft is a major issue in China. Mm-hmm. We know so many people that have been affected by this personally. We've personally been affected mm-hmm. by theft. I've had bicycles stolen mm-hmm. and e-bikes stolen and I've been pickpocketed once, etc. Um but these these kind of um burglar bars are just proof. You don't need to even ask anyone if theft is an issue because there wouldn't be burglar bars on the first six stories of every building in the city unless theft was an issue. Right. Right? That, that was why I wanted to bring that up. A friend of mine um, in Shenzhen, and uh, he's a really nice guy. He's, he's an American, but he came over to do an English teaching thing. And that's how we met, uh, you know. And uh, in fact, the first time I ever experienced Thanksgiving was at his apartment. He was like, he invited me over and he was like, hey, come, come on over. We're having Thanksgiving. And I thought it was awesome. And his uh, fiance at the time cooked like whatever pie that you guys have and stuff. And it was really nice. I enjoyed it a lot. It made a big impression. Anyway, <clears throat> he had been saving his money from all of his work. And he, he was doing a pretty lucrative amount because he was doing a lot of private teaching. Okay. Um, I don't want to give away too much about like who he was teaching and stuff. But he was teaching, teaching like a certain demographic in the city. So these were rich people. And he was being paid cash because... All of the private work that I ever did in China, I'm sure it's the same for you, they would pay cash mm-hmm. because, of course, they don't. They, they, they want to avoid tax mm. and things, so they just pay you cash. And so you go in and the average rate back then was like 200 RMB an hour or something. So he was really cleaning up because he'd just go in this rich area and he'd go from one house like to another house. So from like three to four, he'd be in this kid's house teaching their, their daughter or their, their son or maybe two. Then you go to another one and do another hour, then another hour, etc., etc., and go around this whole complex in a very rich area. Mm. So at the end of the day, he'd be pulling out like a, in, in a day like 1,000, 2,000 RMB. He'd be making a lot of money, this guy. A couple hundred bucks, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, so he saved a whole lot. Um, and I think he ended up saving about 70,000 RMB, which is what, 10,000 years? So it's yeah. more than that. Like no, it's 10. Years. It's about 10. Back then it was more, yeah. I think. Yeah. It's so, anyway, yeah. So he had about 10, 10, 10 to 12,000 US dollars in his apartment. And he lived up on like the, the ninth floor or something of this apartment building. So it's pretty high up. And, you know, he was dumb because obviously he didn't want to get taxed and stuff. And he uh, yeah, was about to question his intelligence. No, I mean, he, he was he was going to be leaving fairly soon anyway. So he Still. was just saving up. So he kept the money in his apartment. And I don't know if he spoke to someone about it or leaked out the information they or whatever will find it was. Out. But obviously someone knew that the guy had money in his, in his apartment. And... You know, it was heartbreaking because what happened was these guys scaled the wall on the outside. They actually climbed climbed all the way up, broke into his apartment. And even though he hid it around the house in like spots that, you know, he thought people wouldn't check, like in his shoes and stuff. You know, he was doing that kind of thing behind books and the bookshelf and stuff. They found it all and they cleaned him out. They stole everything and they put it in a backpack and then they went down in the in the elevator because they unlocked his door, went out, and it was there on the CCTV footage. But as usual, every time this happens in China, <laughs> oh, it's not good enough quality to identify when, the people. It, no, in my situation, when I lock, when I, my motorcycle was stolen, yeah. oh, they have all the CCTV footage, right? Right. But not that day. Because no. the security guards get paid off by the thieves. Yeah. Literally, uh, me and my friends, whenever we lost a bike or a, a motorcycle or something, that day CCTV footage is miraculously gone. Yeah, it wasn't working. It wasn't working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure it wasn't. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. kind of frustrating. Anyway, so um, this, this friend of mine who's a, who's a fantastic guy, I still speak to him sometimes, a really, really nice guy. Um, he unfortunately lost like 12,000 that US dollars. That and that was like a year's worth of work for him or whatever that he'd done. It was a wow. huge blow to him. It, of course, changed his whole opinion of China. And this is what happens a lot to people is mm-hmm. they have a very positive opinion of China when they live there because it can be a fantastic experience but you just need that one incident like that to make you lose faith in everybody because nobody tried to stop them none of his neighbors nobody in the building the security guards the security guards were in on yeah none of this crap tried to stop them so you're just like wait a second all these friendly people that are around that i really thought were fantastic and wonderful and welcoming not one of them stepped in to try and help and i've lost a year's worth of work just like And again, that. that's not indicative of every situation. You can yeah. have good neighbors, of course. You, you Unfortunately, can. oftentimes you don't. No, no. Uh, the other clip here on the yeah. side. Uh, now, this is not a whataboutism thing. There's an actually a really unfortunate thing was that the elderly in the U.S. in nursing homes were very hard hit by COVID-19. Yeah. 
uh, really ravage them because elderly people are very susceptible. Yeah, it's the nature of the disease. Yeah, no, sorry, the, the virus. That's fine. The problem is, is that uh, Chinese state media and a lot of tabloids and stuff in China use that as an opportunity to say, "Look at how poorly America takes care of its elderly." Yeah, like nobody cares about. They don't have filial piety. They don't care about the grandparents. There's no government in- initiatives to save old people's lives. I just wanted to show what a nursing home in China looks like. Yeah. Um, and again, I don't want to be petty, but this is a nursing home in China. There's a slot bucket. Yeah, that one on the right. Yeah. Oftentimes this happens because the people that work in factories can't afford like a super swank nursing home, obviously. And they have to work all the time, right? You, you know what bugs me the most about this is they're all wearing their old Mao uniforms, yeah. right? And uh, it must be such a disappointment to these people mm. to have been so let down mm. by their country. By because the government. that's they grew up believing that this was the correct way okay they gave their lives to this whole you know um communist nonsense but idea changed. but at the end of the day they got shafted mm. all the young kids are running around and you know, using corrupt money to buy lamborghinis sure. and stuff and flaunting their iphones and stuff and here you get these old guys who've basically basically just been left to rot you know yeah. and it's it's terrible it is and the problem is they're still so fiercely communist that these same guys are the ones that are always calling the cops on me when they <laughs> yeah, yeah, see me too. with a freaking camera <laughs> they're like oh this one yeah. spy with the camera i understand it though. Yeah, it's just yeah. the, it was the nature of the beast back then absolutely last yeah. review this is uh the most expensive hospital in xiamen which is a very wealthy city in china mm-hmm. um i was getting a lot of chinese people saying that there's soap in every hospital uh, there is no soap here. I still have, other than one hospital in China, I've never seen the soap in a hospital in China. Mm-hmm. Just want to throw that out there. Okay, nice little refute. So I guess we can move on to our final, and it'll probably be a pretty long uh, segment, which is our Q&A, where we talk about, uh, well, we answer your questions and you question our answers. Yes. Pretty much. Johnny B, I mm-hmm. truly hope that the potential dam failures are not true. Yeah. My original super chat was blocked when I said for the sake of the Chinese people. YouTube, why would you block that? That's weird. That's don't be dumb. Yeah. Thank you, Johnny. Thank You're you. not dumb. YouTube's dumb. Yeah. Uh, Rain Carlson. Thank you very much from Sweden, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, hi, guys. I really like your video, especially Worthless Whips. It would be fun if you could get a Volvo or a Saab. Winston won't let me. Yeah. I'm I s- want to. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a big fan, but like, it, I guess we could get one in I'm the future. I'm not a fan of some of the crap you like. Yeah, I know, yeah. but it doesn't make a difference, though. Because I have to do all the work. <laughs> Fair enough. You, you mean, know, the mechanic stuff. The mechanics. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, so, I mean, unless you want to get super dirty on a Volvo or a Saab. <laughs> Fair enough. We'll work something out. <laughs> yeah, Thank you very yeah. much. Jan Appreciate Fuska, uh, how is it that trains in China, like Gautia, are never delayed? Um, or Mancha, I never understood that. I never experienced any delayed trains living in Hanzhou and around Shanghai. That's interesting because I, mm-hmm. when I, I remember I had to take a train to Ningxia from Inner Mongolia. Mm-hmm. That train was delayed by eight hours. And oh, then yeah. I, I had to take a train into Guangxi as well. And that train was delayed four hours. I've actually had more delayed trains than not, if anything. Yeah, uh, one thing for sure is that all flights are delayed. Mm. But there's a there's a very good <laughs> yeah. explanation. For, did you know? Did you see they caught that woman who made like a million RMB or something by gambling on flights? No. Because what was happening was flights uh, flight companies would give like a, um, a like they pay you back or something like for that. Too they, late. Like if it was going to be severely delayed, you get all your money back and like some kind of bonus or whatever. So she basically just looked at the flights and saw which ones were most likely to be delayed right. and bought tickets for those ones. Oh. She never went to the airport once. Okay, <laughs> but she was collecting every time it was delayed. Then she would immediately ask for, a dis- for her refund, and they'd right. give her her bonus or whatever. That's hilarious. So she made so much money doing that; it was right. ridiculous. But basically, the PLA um, covers you know the the airspace mm-hmm. in China. So there's a lot of military airspace that the the passenger planes yeah, may not like fly through. The Guangdong province where you lived yeah. in, all, almost all of it's military so th- there are these tiny little like narrow passages right. in the airspace and it gets congested because you've got so many planes trying to fly yeah. through. So if there's a slight delay, it backs up the entire queue because the they're not allowed to, and they're not allowed to go around through the military airspace. So that's why it's always delayed. Sure. Uh, the high speed rail, the Gauti is pretty on time. Most yeah. of the time I've experienced delays though, yeah. because I used to very often go between Shenzhen and Guangzhou yeah. and I've experienced a one hour, two hour delays and things yeah. like that. But it depended on the time, like around the, the Canton fair sure. time or whatever. But the majority of the time they managed to keep the that slow trains are very delayed. The slow trains are different. But the the high the high Dude, speed rail. Actually, now that I'm thinking about, it, I've had tickets even canceled because mm. they're so. And that was on the Gautier. That was on the high speed rail. Oh, okay. And that was up in Dongbei. Right. So yeah, no, I have experienced that. You just got lucky, and you're probably because the shoes in Shanghai and Hangzhou. Oh right, right. That's why. Different different systems. Different places, yeah. 
Uh, Parapanera. Floods have been part of China since ancient times. Yes, China invented floods. You didn't know that? Apparently. <laughs> Sander, thank mm. you. Mm. Um, Quantum Overrider says, I love Falun Gong. That's nice. Yeah, you don't, should put, prob- don't put prob- pamphlets probably, on my chair. Yeah, please. Uh, my and car. Look into it. It's, it's kind of a little, little weird. Yeah. It's kind of like Scientology. Anyway, people can do what they want yeah, to do. Yeah, do what you want, but just shit. look into it. I mean, you're not going to levitate and cure cancer with well, that stuff. I, if they say they love Falun Gong, I'm pretty sure they've looked into it, and I think they're probably already levitating. <laughs> okay, <laughs> levitated yeah. right out of here. <laughs> yeah, go for <laughs> it. Tornado. <break. laughs> Vivi, no offense, yeah. guys. You, whatever yeah, you love. Yeah. Uh, when Vivi had a DNA test, it turns out she wasn't really Han. Do you think the actual percentage of Han people is really far lower than what you say? That's actually a really interesting question. Yeah. So if you take a DNA test in China, they will basically lock you into being Han. Mm. But if you run the same DNA through 23andMe, they're getting more and more robust being able to separate that. And a huge chunk of people in southern China are actually related to Vietnamese people. Doesn't yeah. that make sense? It was the same kingdom. Yeah, my, my wife also has She's a... She's like 12%. A, yeah, she has a chunk of uh, Vietnamese. I can't wait to see what my daughter's going to turn Sure. Out, yeah. You know? Now, the issue that I have yeah. is that they're still going on the definitions of the Communist Party of what Han is. So there were over 200-something ethnic groups within China. Mm. Mao reduced it to 56 for easier control. Right. So now... All, like a good percentage of those hundreds that have been lost yeah. are now just called Han. It's right. an artificial thing. There's no such thing as Han, yeah. right? Yeah. Originally, maybe from central China or whatever, but the majority of Chinese people, especially in southern China, has, have nothing to do with mm-hmm. the Central Plains yeah. people or the northern people. Yeah, well, I mean, look, when we were up in northern Vietnam, you can't tell the difference no. between no. southern Chinese people Chinese and, people. No. and no. northern Vietnamese people. They're, very related. They, they're on the border. They're pretty much the same people. Yeah, and they, they, they were historically part yeah. of the same kingdom at times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dalong survived Hainan typhoon in 2014-2015. Wuhan flooding in 2016. Never again. Great yeah. clips and content as always. Gambe. I nice. do not miss typhoons. No, it's it's pretty scary because at the end of the day, you also cannot trust the the civil engineering because that's you know, my issue. Yeah. It's like you're in a building and you're like you're, you're just gone. praying that this thing was done properly. When you see the tiles mm-hmm. ripping off the side of the building yeah. when the winds blow falling and down the trees on people, fall on yeah. The, yeah, it's scary, dude. I, I thought people were, you know, when I first went to China back back in 2006, I had a lot of Taiwanese friends and they were warning me. They're like, look, when these typhoons come along, don't go outside. No. Signs get ripped right. off buildings. They'll fall on your head. They'll kill you and stuff. I was like, shut up, man. You're just trying to, <laughs> you're just trying to be like overly right. you know, cautious. You China. Guess what? <laughs> they were telling the truth. No, they were, they were I telling mean, the truth. Taiwan has the best experience with typhoons, but the thing yeah. is their infrastructure is built for it. Yeah, China's yeah. is not. No. Uh, damn the torpedoes. Thank you. Christina Youngren. Thank you. Uh, Shivam Rai, do you think this is a potential of becoming a colossal refugee crisis? I mean, potentially. I don't. I, I don't know what you mean. Like people leaving China to escape. If, 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 if the flood, the if flood the dam happened. did break, potentially. Yeah, but probably not. Yeah. I mean, at this current state, the way people are being told, I think most people in China believe, honestly believe, that China is the safest place in the world right mm-hmm. now. But the way imagine that been, a damn class. Yeah, I know. But they'd still probably think that if they left the borders of China, they'd instantly die of the, the COVID-19 or something because sure. of the way it's been trumped up. Yeah, it's a good lockdown. Right? Yeah. So probably they'd stick around. Right. You know, it's hard yeah. to tell. Sluggish crustacean, love all the work you guys do. Off topic question. In China, mm. have you seen many body modified people with people's tattoos? No. Uh, stretched ears, lips, piercings. No. It's a big no no in Japan and South Korea. No, 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 absolutely not. Um, Be- definitely in Be- Beijing. Beijing is actually the only place that mm. you see it. Shanghai as well. But not the, as much as yeah, Shanghai. Yeah, but it's so looked down mm. upon. When I first got to China, a woman wearing makeup was looked down on as mm. being a prostitute. That's how right. bad it was when it first... It's totally it's, different it's now. Changed, totally it's different changed now. completely now. But tattoos immediately means you're a prostitute. There's there's a tattoo parlor and a piercing shop in mm. that I interviewed, actually, on yeah. my YouTube channel. Um, and it's becoming much more common now. It, is, it is. That was back in 2016. But... Yeah, that's not that guy, long ago. No, the guy had like 100 customers a year. Four years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying, yeah, yeah. you only had 100 customers yeah. a year, there and mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah, it's not as prevalent as it was in, Dude, in the Dude, you know, like, ha- having been in the hiring, um, you know, business and stuff when I was working uh, for those big training centers and stuff, especially foreigners who had tattoos wouldn't wouldn't be hired. It's no. like, if you have a tattoo, I wouldn't must hire be... them. I was hiring yeah. for my own school. Yeah, I wouldn't you have them. to cover your tattoo. I know I a guy... The parents yeah. would hate it. Yeah, the parents would not let their mm. kids go to school mm. if a teacher had, like, a, a tattoo or yeah. a weird piercing. I, and I learned that rule through Chinese people. Yeah, yeah. Tattoos and piercings and stuff are seriously looked down sure. on in China. So, yeah. It, it is changing, though. It yeah, is changing, especially it is, with but hip-hop minus, culture. Minuscule. Oh, yeah, but then they have to blur out if someone wears an earring. Don't forget... True. 
I interviewed uh, the the owner of the ghetto, that that band, and th- one of their biggest complaints was that they are not allowed to perform live anymore because they right. got too many tattoos. tattoos yeah. And if they go to try and perform live, they have to cover every sure. inch of their tattoos. They may not show. Right. So their whole image of being hip hop and all this, you know, the cool image surrounding it, it handicaps them. No, I understand. My my point is that it mm. is becoming more accepted amongst Chinese people. It is becoming more popular, but that doesn't mean it's being allowed by the government. Yeah. Right. It's not. People are still doing it, but sure. it's sti- they're getting stifled in media. Yeah, I right? think it's getting to the point where uh, it's regressing, to be right. honest. I think the, the opening up of that stuff is kind of, you know... Yeah, I think stopped. we were there when that started blowing up. Yeah, you know? it's it's really getting to a point now where it puts so many obstacles in your path True. that if you want to be a TV personality... Or yeah, you yeah, for be, sure. You know, sure. if you want to do any kind of business with right. anyone, you're not allowed to show this no, stuff, so no. you get to the point where you're like, is it really worth it to get a tattoo? Because sure. it's going to screw my career. Correct. Yeah. Uh, shooter down under. Good day, mates. I mm-hmm. recently came across a news item from our state broadcaster that covered the problems of the dam from 20 years ago. It's on the Journeyman YouTube channel. That's great. They make some great documentaries. Sure. Take a look. Uh, Jer- <laughs> this yeah. Again, you know, Freaking... it's <laughs> they are doing every single thing they can to prevent the the collapse of this dam, which is good. And uh, why would they not? <laughs> well, no, I'm I'm just saying for those people who may be like, oh, it's going to fall, it's going to collapse. Just remember that. You know, if they have to have a billion people there with flex tape holding it yeah, up, you yeah, know, they will sure. to make sure it doesn't collapse. Just to get flex tape dude over there. <laughs> yeah, dude. He's Jeremiah, saying, <laughs> Jeremiah yeah. Johnson. Mm. Out the 70s road trip in the Trans Am was uh, to get Coors. Ha ha. That's a uh, yeah, smoky in the to- bandit. Yeah, we totally uh, did drink a lot of Coors on that trip. We did, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, what was your favorite site or food item in Shanghai? Uh, thanks for keeping us informed and for the entertainment, boys. I like the old colonial area mm. uh, with the old houses that are still there. And number two, favorite food is Shanghai dumplings, obviously. It's the only good food in Shanghai cuisine. <laughs> Shanghai yeah. food's too sweet. Yeah. But those dumplings, you know, those baozi and then those uh, mm-hmm. soup dumplings, amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of like what they did with Xin Tian Di. And yeah. the reason I say that is I went there as part of that uh, architectural, uh, the architectural company that actually built Xing Tian Di. And what they did was they took an old village. Good thing they brought you. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm an architect, remember? <laughs> anyway, the thing is, uh, what they did was they took an old like village, basically, Shanghai, old streets, and they preserved it and they yeah. restored it back to the way it was. Then they made it into this posh, gentrified piece of crap place where, by the way, I was waiting for them. I ordered a cocktail can of Coke and it was 80 RMB. That's $12. $12 for one of those tiny little cocktails. So it's actually a posh wanker area that I hate. Mm. But I like what they did. Yeah, it looks So nice. if you can push all the, the hipster Starbucks bullshit and the limousine, limousines pulling up with the posh, you know, show off Instagram models and stuff, get them out of there. It's actually really nice because mm-hmm. you can go inside a lot of the old buildings and yeah. see what life was like in Shanghai in like 1912. Pre-communism. You know, and you can see the, the, the class and the history uh, yeah. that was there. And sure. I really like that part of it. Yeah, so that's it's definitely worth cool. a look. There's also yeah. this restaurant there that has like a secret code in the door. It's really cool uh, in that area. Tim Wolf. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Julian Kolbis. Uh, do you think the do you guys think that these natural disasters be interpreted as many Chinese as the CCP having lost the mandate of heaven, how relevant is the concept of modern Chinese society? It's still very superstitious. Sure. And amongst the elder populace, I think a dam collapse would definitely be one oh, of those yeah, instances. Yeah. I mean, that's why the CCP fights so hard to suppress news yeah, about these things. Yeah. It's because of the mandate of it's heaven. It's like, yeah, it's there, but it's not that bad. Yeah. Uh, Lazarus, love the shirt. See, milk. thank you very much. <laughs> Peter Smolik. Uh, I watched The Prince of Egypt from DreamWorks, and it was really super similar. I am just waiting for the Prince of Xinjiang, your next travel place. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, let my people go. That's yeah. the one, eh? Yeah. We'd get we'd get like organ harvested in two seconds mm. right there. Um mm-hmm. Jelen GD, do you miss squat toilets? No. No way. <laughs> I love yeah. Japanese toilets. I got one in my own house. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's day. after going to Japan, that's what we decided. Toto wash. Yeah, Western lips. toilets suck too. You gotta get a Japanese Toto yeah. wash lip. Toto wash it. And don't go for off brands either. Just no. get the Toto wash lip. That Bronwell's not too bad. Yeah, I got the Bronwell's not too bad. Made in, if you want to be a made in America, would it hurt? Yeah. I I bought an American one and I bought a Japanese yeah. one. So the American one's in the guest toilet. Yeah. I say guest toilet as if I've got a huge place. I've got a tiny apartment. Yeah, and, and, it's guests, got... and all those guests you have over yeah, during coronavirus. The, the guest is basically if I'm, you know, it's next if, to the baby's room. If so. I'm there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Victor yeah. Gutierrez, uh, mm. you guys should do an interview with the Jimmy Dory show. I commented on their super chat that Seamilk was critical of their Danny Haifong interview. Yeah, interesting. Cool. Um, that was still cringes me out of that interview. Sick lid, wear your mask. Beer virus is rising. <laughs> nice. There we go. 
you know, you got to understand because uh, we work together, we don't go anywhere. No. Well, we just went on a road trip, but we uh, didn't go in anywhere. No, no, I, I we have went to camping. Yeah, I, I have to say something that's been bugging me a lot is, you know, I made that video about my family car that mm. I bought or whatever. And there's a shot of me driving it for the first dude, time. It's in our C3 video too. Yeah, in the C3. Yeah. And I'm wearing a mask in the car. And the amount of people are like, dude, you lost me at the mask. What's what's this moron doing? How shallow do like, you have to be? Wearing a mask by yourself in a car? What's going on with this guy? Moron. You know, take that face diaper off. Guess what, guys? The previous owner who was coughing all over the place, I had just picked it up from him. He was in there like 10 minutes before. So I put on a mask. And I got in the car and I'm driving this potentially Corona Wuhan flu car. You got to understand China, but you also have to understand that this is a disease that should not be taken, a virus that should not be taken lightly. No. So don't take risks. You're that, hurting other people. That I don't care shit if you're not lives person. on things. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't just disappear. So it's on the steering wheel. It's on the gear shifter. It's on the seats. It's on the dashboard. Of course, I'm going to wear a bloody mask. Okay. Right. Number two, <laughs> I'm driving a drop top and they're giving <laughs> yeah. me shit for driving that. Guess yeah. what? I'm pulling up at intersections in LA mm. and literally being approached by coughing homeless people. Asking for money. Asking for money as I'm stuck in traffic, as yeah. I have a drop top that I can't put the top back on, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. And I'm getting criticized for wearing a mask. <laughs> Screw yourself. Yeah. Number one, I'm I'm so sorry for being compassionate. Yeah. What if I'm a carrier and I, I'm going to spread it to old people that are going to die, yeah. right? So, so sorry for being compassionate. Number two, screw me for trying to be careful. Sure. You know? Guys, yeah, please. I have I feel what's going on at the moment, you know, when you can feel the air. Yeah. Especially during this road trip we just did. People have kind of given up on this whole thing. Yeah. I Depends feel like, are, yeah, yeah, I feel like people are just like, oh, it's kind of gone, it's kind of passed, whatever, and they're starting to take risks again. Don't do that, guys. It's reflected they're, in the numbers. Hong Kong's just hit its third wave. Yeah. Korea, Vietnam, places yeah. like that are just hitting a massive new wave. It's it's still very serious. Please take it seriously. Please. Yeah. Mask up. It's not yeah. you're not gonna lose face. You're gonna cover it up. It's and not it, to a the people face saying, diaper. And to, to the people saying, I can't breathe in this thing. Well, I hope you like coronavirus because you certainly won't be able to breathe when you get that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Daniel Britton, is Vietnam the new China? Why don't you go over to ADV China and check that out? We have a video called, is Vietnam the new China? We probably have 10 videos based on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. definitely check that out. Yeah. We'll uh, ride through Vietnam and show you the factories and stuff. That so. have moved from China. Yeah, it's totally worth watching. Yeah. J. Etch. Mm -hmm. uh, really looks like the mandate of heaven is in full effect. Complete yeah. messed up situation and people... Affected have my ultimate empathy. Yeah. Uh, let's keep giving us the truth, boys, and grab some beers on me. It's very Thank important you. that we keep that empathy. Yes. Because that is something the Chinese government will never give us. Yeah. But we can be humanitarian and we can care about human lives. Absolutely. And, and uh, there's this, this travesty and this horrible situation where the people of China genuinely believe that their government absolutely cares about them. Yeah. They do think that the government right. has their best interests mm. at heart, where evidence points otherwise. In fact, the opposite. Yes, they have life, their own life is cheap. Power. Yeah. Life is cheap in China. William Swenson, tip, topical news leavened with eyewitness video, a perspective you rarely see on mainstream media. Very true. <laughs> yeah. Say, guys, what do you think about China in focus as a news source? It's okay if you want to see stuff coming out of there. It might be a bit sensationalized um, because it has a single focus. It's it's like the NTD oh, Falun Gong okay. sponsor Falun Gong thing. Gong. I don't know the connection super well, but yeah. I mean, yeah, if you want, they the, the advantage for them is they speak Chinese. Mm. And we do too, obviously, but they have people in China that look Chinese. Right. So they get a lot of insider information. I would check it out. encourage anyone when it comes to any topic, it doesn't matter if it's China or America True. or whatever, is to look at all the different news sources yeah. that you can, if you can't be there yourself. Right. And, and stay away from mainstream media. Well, I mean, yeah, but if you're going to watch mainstream media, watch all of it. Watch yeah. watch CNN and watch Fox News right. and watch whatever else. And then you can kind of figure out what's really going on. Sure. Because if you're just relying on one news source, it's going to be biased one way or the other. Yeah. A lot of people say that we're biased and anti-China. So if you feel that way, go and watch someone who's uh, biased and pro-China. Go watch CCTV. And, yeah, CCTV <laughs> or CGTN. And find your own truth sure. Sure. somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that everything that we put out there is based on our own personal experiences and so we would not have any incentive to lie no. this is just something that we put out there so that we help we can you you guys we help we hope we can help you understand right. that insomnia last night didn't get me too sleep, dude so, yeah anyway. dude we've been <laughs> but, not sleeping very no, well no no anyway let's continue typical tony 777 thank you very much mm -hmm. uh, Peter Smolik, again do you guys uh do you plan to do any more documentaries after rona mm -hmm. do you have any slavic friends in china what is the general opinion on slavic people and countries number one of course we're gonna do documentaries yes. just gotta wait for rona number two we have lots of slavic friends in lots. china 
they often pick up white monkey jobs. Yes. Uh, especially the Russians because they get paid better than they would in Russia. But they get paid less than the English-speaking, um, yeah. native English-speaking people. So, no, quite honestly, I know a lot of people that get pissed off with the Slavs. Sure. You know, like that friend of ours who recently died from a drug overdose. Yeah, yeah. Not really a friend, an acquaintance, an acquaintance of ours. Um, he was actually a very talented musician. Mm -hmm. um, and he used to play these sort of white monkey jobs for Car real estate. Yeah. And real, and real, real estate, they'd, and... what they would do is they'd have a big opening to sell their products sure. and then he'd be there playing. And the Chinese people would say, wow, look at all the foreigners. Yeah, so this must be a good, good thing. Anyway... Um, he started to get all his contracts canceled because what they would do is they would hire um, Russian, Russians, for, Russians for less than half the yeah. price and then just put them on stage and then play a CD and they would pretend to play yeah, so rather, than actu rather than actually you know, play. Yeah, but because, the point, right? because they're white and they look the part, they would get that. And a lot of the times, uh, training centers, kindergartens and things like that would hire Russians too. Mm. Clothes modeling as well. Yeah. And what they would do is just because the parents can't speak English, they don't know the difference between uh, a British accent, uh, an American accent and a Russian accent. They would think this guy's from England or Go, from the USA. Richard from England. Yeah. Go on YouTube and type in white monkey jobs in yes. China and watch our videos. Yeah. I did one. So we did good. one at ADB. Yeah. So you good. will see exactly what we're talking yeah. about. Yes. Herb. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. I guarantee it. Yeah. Herb travel and video. Hey, Winston and Matthew, thanks mm -hmm. for sharing footage from China. I regularly read news from China, Taiwan and pro-democracy media from Hong Kong. And I see the same footage that have been shared as well. Good. Good, Good here. Good. Dion Chapman, have an awesome show. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Peter Zmolik, your all-time favorite motorcycle. I like my bike. My yeah. Yamaha XSR 900. I mean, out of the bikes I've actually, actually owned. Maybe like yours. No, I like both. I yeah. Like both. Yeah, I mean, right now, there's the Z900 RS. This is the best bikes we've ever had. Yeah, these are the best bikes we've ever had. Yeah. I just crapped growing up because I couldn't afford anything. Yeah. But out of the old school ones that we had, what would you choose? Uh, I mean, I have a lot of nostalgia for our Churchills. Yeah. Our one-two yeah. that we rode I mean, which rode all, yeah, so I mean, maybe. So yeah, okay, so. that's my all-time favorite because yeah. of the memories. Yeah, the memories, yeah. Nautilus Crew, used to work in Shenzhen, left in 2012. You guys are great. Keep, keep up the great, good work and stay safe. Thanks, Thank mate. Cool. I wonder if we bumped into each other since I was there from... 2006 all up until like a year ago so yeah mm. Petr Zmolik best developed Asian country in work-life balance Taiwan a Taiwan. Uh, little bit less work than Japan still a lot yeah very cheap though life is great there I love Taiwan yeah no Taiwan hands down yeah case closed 93 an mm. online dating app recently uh, on online dating apps recently and noticed a lot of Chinese expat girls that live here Florida on them not sure if I want to date any because you say they might drag you back to China and they love the CCP. That's a bad generalization. Mm. I mean, you have to talk to them first. I think yes. you get an figure impression. it out. You'll, yeah. you'll, you'll figure it out. It doesn't matter if they're Chinese or not. <laughs> yeah. And they're not going to drag you back to China. Actually, yeah. we had a pretty heartbreaking situation where we had to help someone. Um, someone contacted me, actually. And this happens to us all the mm. time. Very concerned about a friend of theirs who's on one of those dating oh, yeah. sites. China Love, so China Love org or something. This China is like our second job. Yeah. And they were like, look, he's, he's been talking to this woman and he's going to be flying over there to meet her and stuff and all that kind of thing. And he, she shared the picture with us. Okay? It took us five minutes to sleuth. We did reverse image search. We read her Weibo. She's a uh, freaking... She's got four million followers on Weibo. She travels internationally. She's like a product... She knows Vin Diesel. Yeah. She's married. She's got kids. She's, she knows Vin Diesel. She's like a she's product a um, you know, influencer yeah. and stuff. But, like, the guy was being told that she just, you know... She was on, like, Asian... Yeah, <laughs> yeah she was on chinalove.org yeah, or dot, dot com or something. Yeah. It's like, oh, no, she's just a little um, a little girl in Shanghai who has her own little clothing company. <laughs> yeah. Here, you know, and she's looking for love. And so this guy's obviously sending money to We should totally websites. reach out there and tell her that she's been being used for this. Oh, absolutely, because yeah, she probably has a lot of clout. Of course, she could get that website yeah. screwed. Yeah, guys, please be Every very Every one of these, if you find a website that's specifically a, going after a race, like Asian girls or Russian girls or whatever, yeah. a dating site like that, they're all fake. Pretty much. They're all chock full of scams. There might yeah. be a couple real accounts in there, but pretty much they're all scams. Use use something e like eHarmony e or something where you've got people from all over the world. So if your preference is Asian, you, you know, can put that you in can there. put that in there. But they're real or, accounts. Yeah, yeah. They, they get vetted. Right. It's just too easy for people to to take take advantage of sure. lonely lonely men and women, you know? Jordan T. Russo, any thoughts on Wolf Warrior propaganda movies? We've talked about this extensively. We, When we have a little too much to drink, we'll pop one on every now and then yeah. and just have a chuckle. They I, can be infuriating, too. Yeah, they, they are so infuriating. But look, let's be honest. So are Igor or nationalist mm. movies anywhere. 
Yeah. If I put on a movie and it's like, yeah, America, yeah, jumping around, you know, yeah, screaming eagles and stuff, I'm also like, come on, guys, it's dumb. Of course. You know what I mean? Of course. Anything that's like, we are the best, we're cool, or, you know, it's dumb. It's just dumb. It is. It's very you know? dumb. You are but so dumb. <laughs> Wolf Warriors yeah. are worth a watch just for the yeah, chuckles. Yeah, just, just for the chuckles. But it's it, so yeah. on the nose. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sione, Sione. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for eye-opening and interesting content. No, thank it's you. a pleasure, yeah. Peter's Malik again. Make a video about positive side of China, guys. P Peter, I think you need to go through our channels a little more. You'll probably um, find that the, the majority of them yeah. are still positive. Yeah. You know, I've got over a thousand videos. Sure. I Knock mean, yourself out. Yeah, you just go for it. <laughs> but no, I do understand what you're saying. Peter, it's tough. Okay? Because the positive things, which are, number one, the people. Okay? There are so many nice, good Chinese people. And the positive aspects of the culture have already been covered on our channel so much. And it's the downfall of China that we've seen with our own eyes, the change that's really bitten us so hard, the things that we have to talk about. You you know, it's it's a tough situation to be in. So yes, I could sit here and think about like the positive things and I could think about making a video about, oh, this is what I really like about China. But you do also have to realize right now that China has blocked itself off from the rest of the world. Foreigners are not allowed to travel to China foreigners okay and that means everyone except chinese nationals mm -hmm. so that means it doesn't matter if you're black white green yellow doesn't matter doesn't matter if you're from germany or you're from portugal or you're from i don't know alaska wherever that's a yeah it's kind of uh, north pole i should say yeah that's a greenland country. whatever sure. you may not enter china because you are a foreigner okay the country that is responsible for this current pande pandemic which has affected every single one of us including you it's hard to be positive right now, mm. okay, about China. Especially when you know the systems leading up to it where it's preventable. Yeah, absolutely. And there can be change. Um, I can be positive about Chinese people. Yes. You know, and positive about Chinese food and positive about the beautiful aspects of Chinese culture. Yes. But I as can't we be, do. I certainly can't be positive about the way the Chinese government has been behaving. No. no. And uh, the, the way that it's affected all of our lives. So right. it, it might take a while. Yeah. Yeah. And well, hopefully positive change will occur. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mike Huter mm. with a big one. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, mate. Hey, guys. Glad you're back. Can't wait to see your road trip footage. Oh, we yeah. can't. We can't wait to show it to you guys. It was yeah. really fun. Yeah. Uh, Tuesday, you'll see our first, uh, oh, the, the first Where bit. Where am I? I'm like so <laughs> there he is. Um, because on Worthless Whips, we'll be showing you like the first little clip of that. Cool. Sorry. Yeah. I just, this keeps jumbling around. Right. Jonathan Case, uh, China is now on the Human Rights Council, UN Human Rights Council, as you reported. Council is now investigating police racism in the U.S. Do you think that report will be fair? <laughs> Can the U U.N. Human Rights Council look into uh, police abuse in China? Just, just like if they're going to do it for all member for one member state, why not all of them? Yeah, why not? yeah. In fact, then please, please just watch my video tomorrow because, by the way, my video tomorrow is purposefully demonetized and age restricted because it's talking about police brutality in China and I show sure. a lot of like uh, clips that are inappropriate sure. so to speak so not inappropriate well not just just, just maybe like shocking, shocking to some people yeah. so please watch it tomorrow because it's not going to be recommended due to the age restriction no yeah YouTube's been messing with sharing but my last video didn't even get shared out to my subs yeah super annoying super annoying uh, by the way if you want to check out my video it was about Hollywood censorship yeah. in China and all sure. the movies that they censored you got to plug your video. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm not saying don't plug your video. Plugged. Done. Uh, the Stig 000. zero <laughs> zero. Love your content. Have a few beers on me. Please Thank never you. stop making videos. We won't. Don't you... stop believing. The more they push to try and shut us up, the louder we become. And the more that they try to discredit us, the more it means we're doing the right thing. Yep. And hopefully more people will join in. And they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Gabriel Foster, is there anything we should know about that is going in Hong Kong? Um, yeah. They're basically removed all the democracy. They leaders. are arresting students. They yeah. are firing university professors. They're basically using the law that we warned about. Yes. The, the law that the Hong Kong people have been fighting against has now been pretty much passed. And so now everyone is seeing the brunt. If you say, I like uh, the freedom that America has, that can be considered secession, mm. uh, promoting secession from China, and that is a, a prosecutable offense. It's it's awful. You can get arrested for holding a blank piece of paper. Yeah. Yeah. David M. Hey, guys, have some beer money. Did you ever see the lakes and the cities being filled to create land for development? Yeah. It's happening in Phnom Penh, um, Cambodia, and the streets are flooding every year. Yeah, they do that all the time. Yeah. Huge bodies of water. You see, like, really beautiful swaths of land that will just get paved over and dynamited inside. Yeah. That's pretty ugly. Yeah. 
Amber Johnson, thank you for giving us the truth about China through your experiences. Also, for not stopping when things are getting tough there. Stay awesome. Thank you, Amber. Yeah, absolute pleasure. Han WR, man, uh, will you guys do a Mazda Miata episode? We just talked about that today. I just got an ND and I totally love it. Awesome job with the car channel, guys. We have this weird thing. We know it's going to be an amazing driver's yeah, car. Yeah. It's going to be so good. It's kind drive. of like it's kind of like Apple, right? Yeah, yeah. I, like I don't want to use it, but I have for to. For the longest time, I'm like, I don't want an iPhone. I don't want an iPhone. It's for one. like hipsters. Yeah. It sucks. It's like the people that use iPhones, I don't like the, the the whole scene around it it's like i don't want an iphone i don't steve jobs is not like a god figure i no. don't want an iphone i don't and eventually like okay i'll get an iphone and then, hey this is really good <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> that's what happened to our all our editing equipment we yeah. only use macs and we yeah. only use yeah. apple products i, I you have no a, no i have an android I phone, use an iphone but i also have an iphone right because iphones are actually quite useful for doing screen recordings and stuff so quite often i'll um like if there's a video or if i have a wechat sure and, you know conversation that i need to record I can do a screen recording, which the Androids can't do without third-party right. apps. So yeah, I, I like both. Yeah. Um, so anyway, to answer your question, we don't want to be the guys because everyone does a Miata. But you know yeah. what? It might happen someday. Probably. And will. I understand why you love your car. Yeah. No, Shoot. that's a, it's a very it's good a very driver's good car. car. Everyone loves it. Shooter down under. Mm. Uh, since some people are mentioning the Bible, I wonder if the CCP read the part where it says not to add, remove, or alter the text. Otherwise, you would get all the plagues in the book. <laughs> I'm not laughing at atrocities, yeah. but that is quite ironic. Yeah. Um, Norman Fair, I recently saw a story about a lot of nuclear scientists in, in China are quitting, possibly for private sector jobs. Have you heard anything? That was a hugely overfunded thing. I had a student whose dad worked in the nuclear mm. uh, sector, and he actually left. Yeah. They were super overfunded and the government was just pumping money into like the Daiwan Center, yeah, yeah, like yeah. nuclear center. So yeah, I think it's, I don't think there's any conspiracy. I think it was just overfunded. I think so, yeah. Uh, Jordan T. Russo, oh my gosh. Is China YouTube. going to uh, go to war with India on the kinda, border? Kind of no. did already. Have those all war. skirmishes and stuff. But yeah, if they, it's very common. If occurrence. war did not break out when both sides lost people and there were deaths on both sides, no, you know, not probably gonna not going to happen unless something really bad. Like if one of one side decides to take it too far sure. and like roll tanks over the border or something, you know, I, yeah. think, I think we're okay. To the rescue, uh, mm -hmm. John Oliver on a show finally covered the Uyghurs. Hopefully, uh, the knowledge of the issue and other issues gains traction. I'm not a huge John Oliver fan, but I did watch that piece, and it was very well done. Okay, I and didn't see it. The more exposure, the better. Right. California man. Too many friends are ignorant to the CCP. You have to do Jimmy Dore. I don't know. I mean, I'm open to anything, really. Dory, mm -hmm. why? Uh, and thank you. Have you heard the latest interview of a female scientist who escaped China and revealed that COVID came from a lab instead of a wet market? It was from Bannon. Yeah, um, and she got asylum, I believe, in the U.S. Unfortunately, I haven't heard any concrete evidence out of her mouth yet. And I hope it's not a situation where she just got asylum because she was attached to the situation. Yeah. We'll find out. We'll find out in due time. And we will let you know as soon as we know something concrete. California man. I live in L.A. Um, when will you do an M M and G for a ride? I have a Harley. M and G. What is M and G? Is it like an MG car? Oh. No, meet and greet. Oh, meet and greet. Meet and greet. Um, okay. Whenever coronavirus is gone. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this would be quite possibly the worst time. LA <laughs> is screwed right now. Mm. And uh, it's pretty bad. We actually had trouble finding a campsite during our... Yeah, we had to go in the mountains yeah. somewhere. Yeah, so... Uh, Brian, thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Peter Zmolek, I know you guys. I watch all of your videos, and I know what is going on in China. It's terrible. It would be nice okay. to see a new video about the culture. I'm oh, okay. Well, I mean, the, sure. my, one of my last videos is... If your state in America was a province, what Chinese province would it be? I do videos like that all the time. Sure. You know? I'll try my best. Yeah. I'll try my best. We smoke Bitcoin, start a California biker club, a sick vest. We'll, we'll get <laughs> killed by the Mongols or <laughs> yeah, the, the man, Hells Angels. Such, we they almost killed yeah, me. Yeah, we were riding all the way up to Vegas. Vegas. and uh, Inches. Yeah. Hundreds of miles, like 100 something miles an hour. I think they <clears throat> I think they just like took exception to the bikes we were riding or yeah, something. Yeah, and they're like, this is our turf, no helmets. Yeah. And there are Mongols, all patched up. <laughs> yeah. They they literally just tried to, to run them. us off the yeah. road. It was ridiculous. And you know they're armed. Absolutely. It's Nevada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just hold your line, you know. We just held, held the line. Uh, but I was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, sorry, I don't want to butcher your name. I know it's Vietnamese, though. I love your videos. Keep fighting the good fight. Thank you. Mm -hmm. To the rescue at ADV Podcast. I did get the YouTube subscriber email about your movie censorship video yesterday. So it did get out to some subscribers, at least. Yeah, it, it actually shows me the percentage. It went out to 9% of people. Oh, interesting. So you're mm -hmm. one of the lucky ones. Okay. Um, Dory Roars, five dollars. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gabriel Foster, still have my airline ticket booked for Hong Kong in March 2021. Have fun. Yeah, be totally. safe. Hong Kong's awesome. Even though, unfortunately, all this stuff is happening, you could still, as long as you're not a political dissident yeah, or yeah. something like that, you could still have a fantastic time. There. Sure. Mm. Edward Crosby, I'm thinking about teaching in Taiwan. Is this a good idea? Yes. Don't even think about it. Just do it. Get it done. Yeah. 
Sonder, uh, CCP mm. characters, car- carriers made out of rum. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Paul Douglas, uh, you guys have got reality TV beat. Real honest news and common sense commentary, too. You Thank guys you. are great. Thank you, Paul, and I love your character- caricature. Mm. And the last one, I'm sorry, I just can't see it. By Kevin Modzwilewski. For um, some reason, it's not showing. It. here, it might show. Okay. Uh, I just, I can't see it. Oh, oh. I lied. I can see it. Okay. CCP thought, uh, Kevin, CCP's thoughts on a new Mulan movie? Uh, likely thoughts. Uh, they're probably going to promote it because yeah. uh, the lead actress is staunchly against Hong Kong democracy. I, I have to talk about that for a second sure, if you don't mind. It, yeah. It's really annoying. It's literally me. what my video is about. Yeah, but I know your video is about mm. that, but I don't think you talked enough about the actress. Sure. You know, this is a, a Chinese American. She has an American uh, nationality now, you know, passport and everything. She's Chinese. And she's an actor. She's a very well known, very successful actor. And she is using the tools of democracy and freedom in order to promote anti-democracy and anti-freedom. And this is what really annoys me. So she's there on Twitter. She's highly successful. She's in a Hollywood movie. And there she is on Twitter using all the Western tools, which are blocked in China and not allowed in China. She's no different than the CCP officials using Twitter. Yeah. Right. And she's saying... Yes, the Hong Kong police are great or whatever. Shame on, Shame on the Hong Kong people. And you're like looking at this and you're like, you hypocrite. You would not be in this position if it wasn't for democracy, if it wasn't for the fact that you were allowed to, first of all, come to America and gain citizenship and gain these opportunities. Because I can't go to China and gain citizenship and nope. get those opportunities in China. I tried. I mean, I it's, lived there for 14 and a half years, for Christ's sake. My message to her is it's very yeah. easy mm-hmm. to be pro-communist in a democracy. Yeah. But to be pro-democracy in a communist country, you have to shoot your way out. And you're not yeah. prepared to do that. No, that's the thing. So you, you're talking Shame about money. these horrible hypocrites that have no idea what it's really like because they're so spoiled and so used to the freedoms that they've gained by moving to a place like America that they do not realize that they would not have those same freedoms in China. As an influential movie star in China, you may not talk about political things. You cannot. No. And it doesn't matter how popular you are. Look at what happened to Fan Bingbing. She got disappeared because of her tax. Yep. Things. And then she had to come out with like huge apologies. Yeah, exactly. You know, anyway, it's just people like that piss me the hell off. Boycott Mulan. These Canadians and so on that you see in, uh, you know, in China promoting the Communist Party because they're so used to the place they come from, which is very forgiving and is a good, solid base and they can have freedom of speech and they can do what they want mm-hmm. and they can always rely on their government. They don't understand what it's like to be in a system where you cannot do yeah, that. You know what's sad about that? What's even worse about that example you just made is that if you're a Canadian in China right now and you're promoting the CCP, two of your fellow countrymen, I'm not talking about patriotism or nationalism mm-hmm. here, two of your fellow countrymen that you know are innocent. You guys know. I'm talking to you, you know they're innocent. Yeah. Your fellow countrymen are locked up in solitary confinement in a political prison for retaliation for what your government did. And if you are promoting the, the government and the country that did that to your fellow countrymen, I'd call you a traitor. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. absolute bullshit, and it's evil. Yeah, it is. It right? is. You gotta watch out. Anyway, guys, like, um, I think we've pretty much reached the end of this episode. I apologize if I wasn't on my uh, full form today. I have very little we, sleep, we both, yeah, yeah, both of us. Very happy that you could join us, however, because this is something that we all need to keep an eye on. Um, yes. This is potentially an incredibly big thing that could happen in China. And we also hope, and uh, for those of you who are religious, we also pray that this dam does not collapse and i think everyone's just, on the same page there yeah and that everything is okay and yes. that uh, specifically all the innocent people of china don't need to suffer any more calamity Correct. um and yeah guys just stay awesome don't forget we've got a lot lined up i've got a very important video tomorrow and it is very important i say that every time but this one <laughs> really is it's so important that again i'm willfully not monetizing it and willfully age restricting it because i need to get the message out i need people to see this um and of course your hollywood movie was uh, hollywood movies video was very important too and monday you can catch adv china where we do our motorcycle adventures remember guys every week we have motorcycles so i don't understand when people are yes. like finally you're back on the bike when are you gonna get back on the bike yeah. well every week every guys. week every, every monday. monday every monday uh tuesday worthless whips you will see our road trip mm-hmm. in our 70s cars um, and then, you know, Wednesday, Lao 86. Thursday will not be a podcast next week. It's every two weeks. Mm. And then Friday, you can catch uh, my video. Just yeah. in time for a beer. Thanks, so, guys. Thank you very much for joining us. 
We love you all. And without cutting myself off, as always, you know the drill. Stay awesome.